What we are going to be doing today is talking about gravitational potential energy. Just before we get started though, I would like you to have a go at this question over here in which you need to calculate the gravitational potential energy of a one kilogram mass with respect to the Earth at three different distances. So that's one calculation for A, one for B and one for C. Over here you have the formula for gravitational potential energy and the mass of the Earth. And this would be a perfect time for you guys to pause this video and do some calculations. Okay folks, so let's have a look at the answers. So for A at a distance of 10 meters, the gravitational potential energy of this one kilogram mass with respect to the Earth is going to be minus 4.0 times 10 to the power of 13 joules. If you have gotten this answer correctly, you can give yourself a tick. And for B, case B, which is at 380,000 uh, kilometers, so that's why I have the extra three zeros here. The answer is minus 1.1 times 10 to the 6. And for the final distance, which is uh, essentially the, the distance from the Milky Way, our galaxy to Andromeda, the gravitational potential energy is minus 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8. So congratulations, you can apply the gravitational potential energy equation now and we've tested that. Now what I want you guys to do next is answer the following questions. So the gravitational potential energy is largest in case A, B or C and the gravitational potential energy is smallest in case a B, on a, B or C. And what I want you guys to do now is pause this video and have a think about those two questions. And let's have a look at the answers. So the gravitational potential energy is largest in case C and smallest in case A. Now this is counterintuitive. The reason why this is the case is because A is a larger negative number which actually means a smaller value whereas C is actually increasing. In other words the gravitational potential energy tends to increase with distance until it starts tending towards zero at infinity. Now let me just illustrate this. Uh, some of you guys might be thinking how can this number 4.0 times 10 to the 13 or minus 4.0 times 10 to the 13 be smaller than minus 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Well let's imagine the number line. It's for, for exactly the same reason why let's say minus 3 is actually before minus 2 and then minus 1 and then 0 and then one on the on the timeline. So minus one is larger than minus two, which is larger than minus three. With exactly the same logic, minus 4.0 times 10 to the power of 13 is actually considerably orders of magnitude larger than the gravitational potential energy compared to distance to so galactic distance, which is minus 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8. In fact, this number is so small that it's essentially inching closer and closer towards zero. I mean, this is actually minus 0 0.0001. This is essentially zero for all of the physics measurements. So this is the reason why both the gravitational potential and the gravitational potential energy tend towards zero as distant as the distance tends towards infinity. For those of you that really enjoy maths, you can also think of this as limits of functions. So here is the equation for gravitational potential energy. And uh, let's take the limit of this function as r starts tending towards uh, infinity and you're starting to divide by a larger and larger number. And as you're dividing by a larger and larger number, this e actually gets smaller and smaller until eventually it starts 
tending towards zero, and this is the limit of this function. But the crucial thing is that the gravitational potential energy and the gravitational potential are zero at infinity. An even more intuitive way of thinking about gravitational potential energy is to imagine the actual physical situation which is happening. So we have a mass m, let's say this is the Earth, which has a gravitational field around it. If we release an object, uh, like a little mass m, little m like so, let's say from this distance here, which uh, I'm just going to call r, and it's going to strike the Earth at a certain velocity, which is, let's say, v. Now, if we release the same object from a much larger distance, let's say from here, so we have the same object m, but it starts accelerating um, towards the Earth from a much larger distance, by the time it reaches the Earth, it's going to have a far greater velocity. That means that it must have had a much higher gravitational potential energy, which was then converted to a much higher kinetic energy. And this is an alternative way of thinking about gravitational potential energy. Okay, folks, so hopefully gravitational potential energy makes sense now. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching.